The sequence of a genome provides the information that directs cells to particular fates and functions, but it does not provide the strategy that underlies how this information is used. These strategies for humans and for several model organisms are being unraveled by a consortium consisting of dozens of laboratories, hundreds of investigators, and thousands of individual experiments that together make up the ENCODE projects, the Encyclopedia of DNA Elements. Let's look at some of the transcriptional regulation in Drosophila melanogaster as reported in the FLY ENCODE project. We go to modencode.org and then to view FLY regulatory network. This takes us to this diagram. Each of the green circles represents a Drosophila transcription factor. 76 different transcription factors are shown. These 76 transcription factors represent about 2 or 3 percent of the total transcription factors encoded in the fly genome, but the patterns of interactions that they illustrate are likely general. The red circles are microRNA genes. For now, I'm going to turn off the interactions between transcription factors and microRNAs, although that is something to explore yourself. For each transcription factor, its targets were found by chromatin immunoprecipitation, as discussed in the chapter. The interaction between the transcription factor protein and its targets are illustrated by green arrows pointing from the transcription factor to its targets. Think of the arrows as giving and receiving information. Note that only the target genes that include other transcription factors are being shown. Nearly all of these transcription factors regulate other genes, genes that encode enzymes, signaling molecules, structural proteins, and so on. But this diagram is only looking at the strategy by which transcription factors regulate the expression of each other. The interactions were plotted computationally to show the regulation, and this hierarchy emerges. This particular plot shows five tiers in the hierarchy, but I don't think the number of tiers or even the strict assignment of a particular transcription factor to a tier is all that meaningful. The important point is the overall picture that arises. Let's look at the transcription factor known as HARI, shown by the H in the top tier. When we click on it, we see all the interactions HARI has with other transcription factors, which illustrates that HARI is clearly a central player in the organization of Drosophila transcription. All of the genes that directly interact with HARI remain highlighted, while the ones that do not interact with it are dimmed out. Note how many arrows emerge from HARI and point to other genes about 50 of them. These are the genes encoding other transcription factors whose expression is directly regulated by HARI. These ended up either in the same tier as HARI or below it in the hierarchy. Note also how many other transcription factors regulate the expression of HARI. The picture is a bit crowded, but there are about a dozen genes encoding transcription factors that directly regulate the expression of HARI. One of these is HARI itself. In other words, HARI is an example of autoregulation, of which there are many in this diagram. Nearly all of the genes that regulate HARI are in its same tier or in the tier immediately below it. Many of these genes not only regulate the expression of HARI, but also are in turn regulated by HARI. The Kruppel gene, abbreviated by KR, is an example. Kruppel is a gene important in Drosophila embryogenesis. Notice that it is regulated by HARI, but also that it regulates HARI. The HARI protein binds to the regulatory module of Kruppel and regulates its transcription. The Kruppel protein binds to the regulatory module of HARI and regulates its transcription. This type of cross-regulation between genes and gene products is what give rise to the particular pattern of transcription factors that govern Drosophila development. This diagram shows the, the interactions that occur, but it does not provide information on the dynamics of the interaction. We can't tell from this diagram if HARI is expressed before Kruppel, or if Kruppel is expressed before HARI, or if they are expressed at the same time, but that can be sorted out using the links to the papers that describe the interactions with HARI, and it serves to direct more specific questions. You can click through any of these genes and see examples of the hierarchy at work. Instructions come primarily from genes in the same tier or in the tiers above. Instructions are passed down to the genes in the same tier or in the tiers below. This is not a strict rule, 
but it certainly governs most of the hundreds of interactions that are depicted here. Let's look at one more example. At the lowest tier is a transcription factor known as engrailed, or EN. If we click on engrailed, we see that it regulates two other transcription factors, itself and the INV gene in the tier immediately above it. The relationship between engrailed and INV is worth looking into if you are interested in thinking about gene families. Most of the targets of engrailed turn out to be effector genes rather than other transcription factors. But engrailed is the target of regulation by more than 30 other transcription factors. We have not included the microRNAs in this picture, but they are their own story. In fact, each of these interactions is its own story, and they suggest many possible experiments to think about. With only a little imagination, we can envision hundreds of PhD thesis projects and publications embedded in this diagram. An important goal for genetic analysis of an organism is to have the sequence of its genome. But the ENCODE projects show clearly that the sequence of the genome is an intermediate goal when it comes to thinking about biology.